Hi, this is Cindy Kabika with Energized Living today and Farah, say hi to everybody. Hi, everybody. <laughs> I had to unmute myself because somebody's running a lawnmower out here. Yes, and that's the reason I like the basement where I have my studio because it's underground and you, if somebody's mowing or kids are playing, you don't hear anything. So I miss that. And now that we're getting everything all done down there, I can use that space again unless Ferris takes it from me. And yeah, we'll see. <laughs> I can share. You can share. Okay. Maybe we can both be in there. Anyway, um, is Mosami here? I have not seen her yet. Hi there. Hello. Hi. Oh, Joan's here too. Hi, Joan. No holics today. <laughs> well, I want to go ahead and um, and just start with Mosami. She has a, a health and wellness reading for the month, with that, which I thought was absolutely the coolest thing. I've never heard of anybody doing that before. I know that we talked to Lorelai and she always has the astrological weather for the month and we do that, but not for health and wellness. What a great thing to do. And we're gonna have to do this every single month, Masami, because first of all, you're amazing. If any of you took her class that she did, her, her programs, they're just small groups, you need to do that. If you haven't done it, please, please do it. It's amazing. And the things that I have done for my gut health and to, um, and, and we're gonna continue to work together because I have a lot of metal in my body and still have some metal in my body that I need to get out. And she's helping me to do that. Some of you might remember this and some of you may not. Uh, I have heard this, but I had breast implant illness. And two years ago, I had an explant. And um, this was after, you know, I, they ruptured during my car wreck. And then I had a lot of scarring, so they put new ones in. And I asked them if it could hurt my health, and they said no. And then I slowly started having all these health issues. And they started doing blood tests, and they said, where are you getting into all this metal? And, and all these toxins are in your bloodstream. What is going on? And, and um, it ended up being after lots and lots of research and asking doctor after doctor, which they said, no, 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 it, they're perfectly safe. That's simply not true. And uh, if this is a problem for you, you might want to check out Breast Implant Illness by Nicole and then start getting someone like Masami who can work with you one-on-one -on -one to get the metals out. I've done a lot of work so far. I've had a lot of gut issues because of it. And she's working with me on the gut issues. That's what we did in the class. And now we're working on, and our next step will be working on getting the rest of the metals out of my body. And um, just, just the gut thing alone, I gotta tell you, is remarkable. I feel so much better and just lighter. So she's wonderful. So Masami, I hope you don't mind if I bragged on you a little bit, but you're amazing. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. I know Mary's going to be on her call this Thursday, but you know, it's, yes. if I were you, I would sign up. <laughs> I mean, sign up. Just, Do you have spaces good... left for this week? So not this week, but the uh, starting next week, I have spaces. Okay. I just opened up new, new dates. One thing I want to say, okay. everybody, if you, if this is something that feels right for you, sign up right away because the spots fill up really quickly as we have found out. I went to sign up for the first one she did. That was already full. And so I had to do the second one and, and that all worked out great, but <laughs> she fills up so fast <laughs> and it's so affordable. Uh, it's in the, yeah, it's, I decided it was end of March. Um, my guides were like, do this. You have to do this. And it was just this like a quick motion. And I said to my husband, I said, put it on a website. I don't know what it is, but I just have to do it for $99 <laughs> per person. And then, you know, Cindy, you know that you get hostage to the, the group for like close to three hours. Yep. But at least plan, plan for two and a half hours or so, you know, two hours and at least 20 minutes to two hours and a half. It's just, we share so much and you start to realize that 
each group has its own theme. So like the one before I just did was a, there's a lot of viral stuff that came up or gallbladder liver stuff uh, uh, had come up or breast implants thing came up. You know, it, was, it wasn't just you. There were a couple people on that call that actually needed that information. And so it's just the synergy that works out. It's fantastic. I, I find it amazing how the universe just collects the right people and say, here, these are the five you need to work with. So I've been really enjoying the, the energy exchange, that the support and that kind of the non-judgmental, beautifully protected and holding the space together. It's been amazing. I, I could not have asked for a better way to support people. So I love it. And the that's what happens when you listen. Of, that's what happens when yeah. you listen to your guidance. So mm -hmm. <laughs> that's what yeah, it's true. It's true. And you know, the monthly um, forecast is something that the I was I always did, but did it in a very short, like a small group, or like I shared it with just a, a few people for several years. And I thought, you know, why not share it with your gang? And, you know, I don't need to go into crazy details, but just so that the, you can kind of prep yourself and be ready for it, because June is right off the bat, everyone, it's a crazy month. I don't know any other way to really explain this, but um, it's going to be volatile. That's that we already knew that i think cindy you were already feeling this last month i was um and i think what the universe was trying to show me was that it is going to be volatile so go to the depth first find out how deep you can go and really expand your roots because it's going to be windy and you know there's this idea that the deeper your roots are and the wider you can spread the taller you can get and then the wider you can expand your branches and you can withstand the wind and the storms that will come to you and we're not out of the storm and how we are going to interact with this storm is going to be very different than we've ever experienced none of us been here before that i think that's something that we all need to recognize mm -hmm. that we have the tools though but the tools will need to be exchanged so it's this idea that the, we are in the same storm, but we are all on a different boat. So we need to kind of look at each other and say, what you got? Do you have an extra oar in your boat? You know, do you have an extra uh, water tank in your boat? And we need to ask each other for support. That's going to be very important and not to get so caught up in singularity or individuality. Um, you have to individually take responsibility this month for your health and wellness. And it, this isn't just about health and wellness, but I will try to, you know, narrow into that uh, topic a little bit. But basically, know that, that you don't have all the answers. None of us do. And, in the, and it just, it's just what it is. That's just the fact of life right now. So I wouldn't create fear around it and not get caught up in, oh my gosh, I have to figure it out. I have to Google. I have to figure it out on my own. Um, being on your own and trying to go through this new territory is going to be very difficult. You could maybe do it, but it, there are much better way of doing this is to come together as a community and ask for support, be vulnerable with it and say, I don't get this. I'm struggling with this. Does you know any of you have any kind of a tools that I can use or be supported by? So that's one. Um, May was, and I wrote this on my newsletter yesterday, but May was a pretty um, difficult, but it was more of a self-reflection time. And I hope many of you did take the time for self-discovery and going deeper within. It was, we were all asked to go within ourselves journey within and you know ferris you really did that for sure yeah you went deep mm -hmm. much deeper than i wanted you to go that deep I, but I not only went deep but i took some other people with me <laughs> yes you did laying you around certainly did. so we had a lot of practice in may and that's going to be very helpful because like i said it's going to challenge us to come out of the underground and it's going to ask us to come up from the ground, but it's how deep were you able to sink in and how wide and deep were you able to root yourself 
So if you feel like that root system isn't quite there for you, I would take the time this week before the full moon on the 5th and eclipse on the 5th to take the next couple of days to really ground yourself. Because what's going to be asked of you in this month is not to get so grounded. And it sounds strange, but you just have to trust that you're grounded. And then don't get stuck in being so grounded. It's going to ask, it, the, the world is going to shift. The universe is shifting. Your body is going to shift. And it's going to ask of you to move with it, undulate with it. It's going to ask you to sway with it. So that's when you try to hold on to the grounding practice too much that can cause you to get rigid. And that rigidity is gonna show up on your legs, show up on your knee joints, that rigidity will show up on your lower back and sacrum. So if you're already feeling sacral area tightness, SI joints, your glutes are starting to feel really tight, your lower back is talking to you, you've gotta find a way to loosen that up a little bit so you're Roots can have little movements, but your um, trunks have to start to move up. So that might be a little sign that says you are a little too grounded. So coming from somebody that you know, was born on Earth Day, same with Joan, and um, very grounded human being, I'm a total Taurus. You know, I love being earthly person. For me to say, not get too grounded is pretty significant. So that's why I wanted to share this with everyone and to create exercises that will ask you to move. So um, whether it's Tai Chi, whether it's going for a walk, but when you walk, maybe choose a different route than usual. So you're creating some flexibility. And you know, Cindy, I mentioned this, but having the range of motion that isn't just on the physiological standpoint, but from your belief system, from your food choices, from where you walk to how you drive through your grocery stores to how you wake up in the morning. Maybe you always land with your right foot first and then you know what, change it around. Change things around because that's what's gonna ask of you to land it with your left foot first today. It seems like a, you know, little things that that's going to prep you this month. And simple things like brushing your teeth with your non-dominant hand, you know, or um, cooking your dinner with a different hand or, you know, trying to eat with a different hand, what, whatever that might be, but just throw a little curveball at yourself. And so, um, let me see. So last month, so May was a preparatory, we all prepared. So hopefully many of us did go really deep and you know had a lot of time for self-contemplation. And um, really that, that work is gonna come about, that's gonna come to fruition or maybe not fully blossom. It's just, it's in transition. This is gonna go on for a little while. Um, and then let's see. So for June, I actually posted on my Facebook last night, late last night, just the kind of a summary of it too. But it's time for June, it's time to remain curious, more curious maybe than ever before, and be inspired by even the little things, pay attention to those things. Um, do not get stagnant, so that's something I've mentioned, so not get too grounded, but still feel that sense of the earth supporting you, but start to have a flow around it. So I would actually move the breath a little bit more upward than um, some of the breathing techniques I've showed you and then I teach in classes and things is to breathe down, but this time maybe expand it upward. Um, proactively incorporate new ways to dance with the uh, changes. So I noticed Cindy used the word, you know, dance and do um, play music and things like that. That's perfect. Make up your own songs, everybody. Yes. Oops, sorry, this is, uh, my phone keeps going off. Um, yeah, I was thinking about it this morning and what I don't, what, with what's coming next, I don't want people to be in fear. It's not a time for fear. It's a time to, for heaven and earth. And heaven and earth is about creation. And so creating new songs, creating new dances, creating you know, whatever it is, uh, I'm going to get out some paint 
and, and paint a picture. I, I feel like there's one right there. I started writing the poem that I was promised um, about the light brigade. So creation, everybody, it's about creation. So yes. I agree, Osami. Yes, um, it, it's good because uh, it's just really, you gotta dance with it. And there are times that you're gonna be leading the dance, but there are times the universe will be leading the dance and it's okay. It's just to have that little more flexibility around it. So that has to show up in your physiological body as well. And that requires flow. So you're not creating a dam in your body. So this is the month that you can no longer really ignore the health side of things also. And what that means is that the flow has to come back into your body. So if you've been feeling like you're financially stagnant even, or your sleep doesn't seem to have a good flow to it, or your communications with your loved ones just have a glitchiness to it, or you just feel stuck overall in your life, then create some flow around things like lymphatic system. So some, do some lymphatic movements, um, dry brushing, you know, do things to even like slapping your skin, you know, towards your heart. That's very, very helpful. Doing a little bit of jumping, skipping, um, rebounder. If you have the rebounder that just collecting dust, this is the month to pull that out. Um, so anything to create flow. So if you've noticed that you were constipated more in the month of May, a lot of people felt constipated. Then this is the month that that will need to be addressed. It's no longer that you can just throw in the metamucil and stool softeners and call it good. That is not resolving the issue. You have to get to the core of things. You have to get to things that are causing you to have that stagnation. And so to, it's going to force you to face what it is that, that you need to be addressing this month. So that's one, one other thing. And it's, um, it is going to be a huge challenging at times and movement oriented month. So be, you know, the ground will feel unstable at times, but trust that the, the earth is always supporting you to have that deep sense of connection with the earth every morning and then kind of surf with it. It's not going to be, it's not a, going to drown you, but you will have to learn to surf, you know, whatever that means to you, whether it's surfboard or, you know, you're going to pull out your old bicycle and start to maybe ride your bike again, uh, walk differently, skip differently, sing differently, just do things to create newness and continue to take responsibility for your own health in your situation, whether that's relationship, financial, or health, or even, you know, your concepts of politics, you know, take responsibilities for yourself and your own mindset. And then, and for your own creation that you're unfolding in your life. So it's going to ask a lot of us this month and know that the, you all can answer this. You can all surf through this. Um, because you've been preparing for this. So that's, that's the part that you want to always remember is that I have the tools. And if I don't, I'm going to look up and look around the other boats that are in this storm together. And the storm isn't always going to be, you know, raging storm. It may just be a little bumpy, you know, a little bit bumpy here and there. But look for uh, relationships, ask for support, things like that would be helpful. And and you know, tonight I have my uh, monthly webinar I do once a month, and then I will go much more in detail about this, and then I will go through some tools on survival to thriving. So you know, the whole goal for the next three months, because I feel that this trend is going to go on for three more months, pretty pretty intensely. And so I want to share some tools, um, some actually neuro neurological maybe exercise as well to create neuroplasticity a little bit more and then a heart range. So heart rate variabilities to range emotion. So having more variety is what we need to focus on. And I will talk about that more. If any of you are interested in joining my monthly webinar, please check out my website. But yeah, those are a couple of the things. Maybe you might have some questions. Um, do you want to go ahead and type in your... Oh, your sure address there where they can go and and check out is there a cost for this yes yeah, so it's between twenty dollars and thirty dollars and you can just choose 
whatever you can pay between that. So 20 or 25 or 30. And okay. it's tonight at 8 p.m. I know it's a little late, 8 p.m. Eastern time. Okay. So, yeah. And it's, it's going to be a part one of the next three months series on shifting away from just merely surviving to how do we get to the place of thriving as human beings, body, mind, spirit. So we're going to go through more of the body physiological today and a little bit of heart mind connection. So we'll go into the neurology side of it a little bit. And then um, I'll give a little bit more on the forecast. I shared some of it today with you guys. So, and I'll go into a little bit more actual practices, but you know, I just wanted your gang to know what to prepare for. And if you notice yourself doing the same thing, the habitual patterns are going to be challenged. And that's, that's just where we're at. It, the world, the universe is challenging all of us to look at our own mind, our own thinking, our habitual patterns, and to question them. And not to question to the point that it, you're going to discard all the you know, wonderful things you've learned so far, but to really question, can I change the way I'm doing things today that could create a beautiful rippling effect onto this earth? so that we, we're ready to embrace this changes are coming, the newness is coming. We can see this, it's happening everywhere, particularly in this country right now, North America and in even in uh, Europe and you know, UK as well. So yeah, just wanted to mention that. Well, that's great. I'm gonna try and be there. I don't know what- um, It's recorded. Paris's son. Yeah. <laughs> has for us we have a limited time before he leaves oh yeah and it, <laughs> we're gonna and try and get it done but i can always listen as i do if i have something that i can yeah. you and know it's, that's a mindless it's, task <laughs> it is recorded so yeah don't don't worry about it and then i'm a little bit of a nerd so everyone if you do join i always mary will tell you mary's laughing i'm a very much of a nerd so i study a lot about this stuff I spend at least three weeks preparing for a once a month webinar and I create um, PowerPoints and everything. I mean, I'm a literally a nerd. Yeah, John Maris. Like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> so prepare yourself, come with a pen and pencil, uh, you know, I mean, pencil and paper and, and then, but it's recorded. So, okay, great. Yeah. That's great. Well, I'm excited. I hope that I can be there. Like you said, it's recorded, so I can always yes. sign up there. And, and right. Ferris, Ferris won't be helping, so he can always be there. <laughs> <laughs> well, any, any thoughts, any questions on that? Because I know I wrote some more notes, but I didn't get to all of them. But, um, you know, I, I just think that uh, we already, you know, many of us in this group are so in tuned with our intuition and the sense of um, connection with the guides and the universe that I think we're already feeling that things are changing. Mm -hmm. And if you try to fight to bring it back to the good old days, whatever that may, means, you are going to exert more energy doing so. So it's kind of like, I can't remember the exact poem, but it was something about um, Native Americans poem that they jump into the rivers and then they see each other and they find each other floating towards the ocean. That's kind of what we need to be doing instead of trying to swim upstream or try to get away from that river. I say, don't be fearful, jump in, know that the, you can swim and float with us, you know, just go down to the ocean with us because change is coming and it's better to go to that party than to try to go upstream with it. So, yeah. The upstream can be very, very hard to do unless you are guided to do it in, in some way. If, if your guidance says do this, that's another thing altogether because then you will have someone actually holding you by the hands, pulling you and it will feel, feel effortless. That's what I find. So mm -hmm. go with that. I, yeah. I just wanted to add that because I've had that happen before. Right now, I'm just feeling like time to dance, reorganize, create space in your life. 
um, get rid of stuff. We're getting rid of a bunch of stuff as we're cleaning up stuff for Ferris, getting it ready for Ferris. And, um, yeah. I actually even wrote down here, it says clear space. I said, clear your calendar, clear, you know, finally clear that closet, um, open windows, open curtains, just clear the space. And I know all of us had that time during the COVID-19 to go through the closet, but I have to be honest, I didn't get a lot done on a cleaning my closet whatsoever. So it, this, is, this is the time. This is the time to actually get motivated and create flow and movement. And whatever you can, think flow and movement every single morning, morning and say, what can I do to do that? Yeah. One of the things that you said that really speaks to me right now is I'm trying to create change in my habits. Um, like I said, I got up about 4.30 this morning and that was not really my choice. It was the cat's choice. I'm sleeping in the living room right now because my husband has my bedroom because uh, Gary's, uh, Ferris has Gary's until we get the basement apartment ready. <laughs> so everybody is sleeping in different places and I've got the couch because I'm shorter than my husband my six foot husband. So he doesn't fit. <laughs> so the cats are fighting and I got up early. But what happens, Masami, is I, I always wake up early and I, I always think, get your work done before anybody even gets up. And so I get up, I, I start writing right away. I get emails set. I, I edit. Um, some of you might have noticed when I posted last night one of the videos, I posted at what, like at 1.30 in the morning. You know, I, I got up because I didn't have time in the day to do it. I wanted to get it done. That's what I do. And then I'm up again at 4.30. So um, I am trying to change that. I want to change that habit where when I get up, it's meditation right away and going back to doing um, Qigong and a little bit of yoga and then running. I want to start running again. I really miss my running. And I haven't done that since I had the two breast surgeries that I had back to back. I couldn't for a long time. And now it's time for me to start getting back in shape. I feel, you know, I've gained weight because I hadn't been able to do a lot and it's time, but that is hard because I'm so used to plopping in a chair saying, let me knock this out real quick. So, so yeah, just, I, I know. And the fact is it takes good 15 weeks to change your habits. Truly to change your habits, it takes 15 weeks. So it's a commitment, you know, and, and I think what helps with, and I've been actually working on um, supporting empaths and sensitives with sleep patterns. And I've been thinking about doing a webinar on that. So I will let you know when I do it because I have a very different idea about sleep when it comes to working with sensitive people and empaths and, you know, just, just how you channel things it has to be supported. And then the sleep hygiene information and then just that what's out there for general public, like 80% of the public isn't going to work for empaths. So I've just been really tuning into that and then coming up with really solid information to support people like us. How do we get that sleep? How do we get the good patterns going? How do we really emphasize self-care and taking care of ourselves first so that the we can take care of others? I mean, we know this, right? It's the putting oxygen mask on yourself before assisting others issue. And it really is important for someone like you, Cindy, because you are here to support so many of us all day, every week, multiple times a week. So, you know, we all want you to put that oxygen mask on yourself first, but it does require the shift, but to really be gentle with it and say, it does take me 15 weeks. That's just, we're after all human bodies, you know, we are human physiology. So give yourself 15 weeks. The number one thing that the I, and tonight I'll talk about this more, but the most important thing you can do, all of us can do, is to wake up in the morning and go outside. 
whether it's snowing, raining, cloudy or sunny or everything in between, it doesn't matter. Allow the sun to shine on you. And whether it's even a cloudy day, because that sun will penetrate your eyelids and through your skin and it supports you to produce serotonin. And that serotonin is the you know, neurotransmitter that's very important for you to shift your circadian rhythm and to really turn, tune, tune you to the point that you wanna take care of yourself. Serotonin really emphasizes self-care. So when people say, I don't know how to take care of myself, I don't know how to be nice to myself, da, 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 I say, go see the sun first thing in the morning. So I go out every morning and I say, good morning, sunshine. I'm here and thank you so much. And I just kind of stand there and I do a little bit of Tai Chi moves, you know, not much, but just Tai Chi moves. I'm, I'm the crazy neighbor that I will do this in my Eastern side, which is <laughs> my front yard. And sometimes people with the dogs will walk by and they just think I'm nuts, but I don't care. I'm bare feet, rain, shine, snow. It doesn't matter. I'm always bare feet out there first thing in the morning, even for 10 seconds if it's snowing. But I am saying good morning to the sun. And that is, your, that is my sun salutation. You know, I don't need to pull up yoga mats and wear expensive Lulu lemon pants to do a yoga. That is my yoga. Yoga is the yoke is to bring bring all things coming together. Yeah, I know, Joan, you love that. <laughs> you don't need that expensive pants. You could do it with your pajama pants. So um, that's, that's where I would start, Cindy. And we need you to take care of you so you can be here for us. And I do sit outside. The first thing I do, well, I have a dog, so. <laughs> oh, yeah. Make it more intentional. And that's going to change the brain. You know, when you make it intentional. Because the, the, we have, you know, three layers of the, I mean, there are a lot of layers, but three main layers of the brain and the lizard part of the brain, the, you know, very ancient part of the brain loves to be patted, you know, like, or pet, pet the lizard is what uh, Rick Hansen says, Dr. Rick Hansen, I studied with him, he said pet the lizard, because lizard, lizard just needs to know that the, it's safe, that's all it cares about. And the next, you want to feed your mouse. So feed the you know, little mouse in you, mammalian part of the brain, so it's satiated. So when you go outside, you do these steps. And then so you feed the mammalian part of the brain by saying, good morning, sunshine, I'm being fed by you. So you consciously be fed and be um, like you're, you're consuming that, you're marinating in that sunlight. And then you go to the part of the brain that is uh, he calls it hug your monkey, but you want to hug that part of you that is a monkey, you know, and say the monkey part loves to be hugged and to hug. So when you say good morning, sunshine, and you know, you do the same thing every day, then a lizard gets settled. Every day you do it, you know, the lizard goes, okay, all right, I can relax. There's no fear here. Then the mammalian part of the brain will say, okay, can I get fed? So you feed the sunlight. And then when you get to the hugging the monkey part, that's when you go, you know, I just, I love this. I love being me. And then that's when you can hug your dogs or, you know, you do other things. But because the hugging the monkey part just wants, that part of the brain just wants to be heard, wants to be understood, wants to be loved, and wants to know that it's worth being on this earth. So you take a moment and do that. And so anyway, those are a couple of the things that you can do layers of for next 15 weeks. It'll make a difference in your life. It, it certainly will. Yeah. Well, I'm, I am working on switching that. And the other thing that I am doing, um, you know, going out and watering my garden, you know, being barefoot for a while, letting my doggy run around if she's not too barky in the morning. But um, the other thing is just switching to a vegetarian diet for the summer. And I often will do that. Although when my body calls for me to, I will eat some meat protein. But I, because I overheat, I have a really bad heat issue where my heart resting heart rate, like today, my resting heart rate is, well, it's down to 87 now. It's been about 109 all day. 
and that's because of the heat and heat in the house. So I'm real heat sensitive and my heart starts racing. But if I don't eat a lot of fat or meat protein, then it stays more normal, I have noticed. So I am getting, I've changed that as of today. Okay, um, so I think you're doing the right thing. Uh, whenever your heart rate goes up like that, and I was just kind of tuning into you, but there are two minerals that came up. One is potassium and the I other one is both. magnesium. Yeah, I take both. Yeah, so maybe you can email me and let me know how many milligrams you're taking. And I might recommend that you take them at a different times. And then maybe I sense that a little bit more might be good. So just email me about that. But those two minerals came up right now when you were talking to me. Okay. Mm -hmm. right. and I'll, I I'll definitely email you because yeah, the, the summer is when it hits me. Even yeah. when I'm out riding, I wear a, the vest that you see me in is, is a water vest, a cooling vest that you put in cold water and then I put it on and then I can ride. Otherwise I can't ride. Oh, wow. Because I overheat and my resting heart rate in the heat is 140. That's a resting wow. heart rate. Okay. Yeah. We so need it, to it's that. been going on ever since the breast implant yeah. illness. Yeah. I was just going to say that heavy, heavy metals are excitatory to your system. Yeah. So, you know, until we can get that coming out of you and you, did you start taking NAC? Yeah. Yeah. I was already taking it. All right. So, I, yeah. I was taking it and then I had gone on a sabbatical cause I always quit everything for a while and then start back up. And as soon as you mentioned it, I thought I need to start that again. So I did. Yeah. Okay, yeah. good. So yeah, I mean, I think it's important that I know the dose that you're taking so that I can tune in. I, and can, I actually am a nerd too. I have a list and yeah. I actually take my, y'all, I take my multivitamins and I look at what's in there. Anything that has ingredients that I'm getting from something that's a singular, like a B12. I want to also know what's what I'm taking B12 wise in other supplements that I'm taking. So I have a graph. I am a total nerd about stuff like that. <laughs> yeah. We'll, we'll figure out this month to work in a one one you and Ferris too. So yeah. Okay. No, it, sometimes what I sense is that you could use a little bit more and okay. when your body is trying to detox and this is important for everyone, but when your body's trying to detox, it will allocate all your nutrients course that so it does use up a lot more than what's recommended as a daily dose and daily dose is not a therapeutic dose per se it's a maintenance dose if you're absolutely healthy and you have nothing going on in your life not a drop of stress and not a drop of you know watching news and the, your water is filtered and air is completely filtered and you live inside the bubble then you can take that amount, then it'll be perfect. But other than that, most people need a little bit different dose than that. So Stress? What stress? <laughs> <laughs> I don't get what you're talking about. <laughs> Zero. No stress at all. Right, Ferris? <laughs> no stress. Um, just learning about how to put the medicine in his pick line was kind of nerve-wracking at first but we've got it down to science between both of us we remember how to do it so we're, we're, we're a good team as far as that part goes uh, yeah and there start taking some uh, probiotics and there's a liquid one that i really really like and i don't think i mentioned it on the, these calls but it's called inner eco and i'll just type it up here okay oh. good um so you can get them at like just about any store so Inner Eco. Okay, so Inner Eco um, is a coconut water based kefir. And you could get them in a refrigerated section of most grocery stores. Okay. I don't know if they have it in Canada, but I might have seen something very similar to this. But, you know, for Andrew, but um, Inner Eco comes with three choices. So one is like a plain, plain one will taste really sour, like yogurt. You know, mm -hmm. the top part of the yogurt used to come with like a water on the top. That's kind of what the inner eco part is. Yeah. And then the second one is tropical tasting and the other one is a berry tasting. I don't recommend the tropical. It's kind of gross. So I love the plain Thanks one. Thanks for the warning. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the one I would have chose. 
Yeah, plain one probably be good. And then what I would do is you want to build it up. So slowly build the microbes. And it's a liquid base, so it's so easy to digest. Um, it use it, I use this for babies, newborns. I use this for kids with, you know, just um, behavioral issues, which so be perfect for you, Ferris. You're having behavioral issues, so, you know. <laughs> <laughs> having so, behavioral issues? Behavioral <laughs> issues? <laughs> anyway, so you, you want to start with about a quarter cup. Quarter cup a day. Okay. And then gradually, you know, shift it to, I wouldn't go much more than I would say three quarters of a cup a day, because then you can maybe start to have diarrhea, right? So start with little by little, like in a shot glass and, you know, enjoy it on an empty stomach. So whether it's first thing in the morning, midday, or maybe a little bit, you know, two hours after dinner or something like okay. that, that'll be a good time to start introducing that inner eco. Okay, good. Thank He's you. He's pretty much got an empty stomach because he can't eat anything much. Yeah. We're, we're yeah. experimenting with soups like the potato soup he's done well with and the tomato soup. Yeah. So liquid, 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 liquid. You know, liquid-based uh, nutrients are going to be the best right now. And I know I need to connect with you, Ferris, sometime yes. this week so that I can give you a list of some of the liquid-based nutrients you can start to add. Okay. Let's do that so, tomorrow. Is that okay? Yeah. Hmm? Tomorrow? Tomorrow. Oh, yeah. You know what? Tomorrow might work, actually. Because, okay. yeah, today I'm, like, spending time working yeah, on it. Yeah, today's not good for you. No, tomorrow is perfect. So I'll email you. I'll okay. email you. Cool. Yeah. Ferris is rocking in that stairways. Oh, right sorry now. about that, y'all. <laughs> Not, um, and actually, I had a couple of private questions. Something, oh, Andrew, do you want to ask your question? That's a good question. Don't ask okay. me privately. <laughs> well, I, it's not a, a it's not, there's nothing private about it. It's because uh, I was on uh, uh, her group call on Saturday, and uh, she, she said something really interesting, which I thought would be good to bring out. And it's about eating because right now I have a total makeover. I have to stop eating bananas. But you talked about uh, <laughs> that's a side note. I'm different. I have to get back onto topic. You said okay for breakfast you eat like a queen, for lunch you eat like a, a king, and for dinner you eat like a servant. And I just thought that that's uh, something that would be good to to for for to tell the group. And so, and I, <laughs> so, uh, I just, I, I just really enjoyed uh, doing the group group session with Masami on on Saturday. There, there's, uh, she's just absolutely amazing. Uh, if you, if that's the only thing you can afford, it's well worth signing up to do it. It's just, you know, learning from other people. It was amazing how there was connections as well spiritually, and other people were having issues. Like, uh, it, it's like. Like when she first came on, she talked about Ferris with the pickle juice and that introduced me to pickle juice. And I mean, what she's doing on here when, when each person is asking their questions. Um, so, oh, and I think Zara was on. Is she on, is she on right now as well? Zara yeah, was on. Zara's and on she, here. She, she was, uh, I, I don't know if it's okay for me to tell people. Uh, I mean, well, anyways. Zara asked a question, uh, do you have to wait to eat after taking Inner Eco? I don't know if there's anything more you want me to talk about the group, Masami, but uh, I'll just no, go. I, I just really enjoyed having you. You know, I was really- and I was like the only guy, it's, she, she told me, I'm like, besides Ferris, like Ferris and I are the only guys, uh, it, it, and it was like the only guy in the group, which is like, wow, what an honor. I mean, Ferris, Ferris and I should be just very proud, and at least I, I'm very honored. So, anyways, <laughs> well, I, I'm going, uh, so any guys out there that are listening, do sign up for a group session with Masami. It's well worth it. It's not just for the ladies, it's also for the guys, it's for everyone, uh, especially if you want to get your health in check. So, I'm going to mute myself. Unless you're really macho. Then go for the heart surgery instead. <laughs> yeah, we've missed you, Ferris. Oh, Ferris. Oh, Ferris, you're just it's such a delight. I can't, like, you know, I'm so glad that you're back. You, you want to stay down here. 
Um, so it was Susan and Zara. Okay, so Zara asked, do you have to wait to eat after taking Inner Eco? All right. Okay, so, um, and Zara, Zara had another question too, privately said, you know, the going out to see the sunlight, um, she said, it, you know, is it okay if I wear my glasses? And I would say no. You need to take your glasses off and allow the sunlight to truly penetrate your eyelids. So you can close your eyes if you like if it's too much above the ground. So there's a general rule to the sunlight in the morning. You don't wanna see the sunlight that passes about 15 degrees above the horizon, okay? Then, and it can be kind of harmful if you look at directly at the light, but you can close your eyes and still face the sun. And then also the inner eco question, the, the liquid probiotics, it's best that, that you don't want to eat right away after that because it's probiotics, right? So I wanna give it at least 20 minutes after you've swallowed to just allow that to move its way down so it doesn't get killed by stomach acid, right? When you eat, your stomach acid gets produced and that can kill your probiotics. So I see a lot of people just take kind of a handful of supplements at like just some random time with the food and I look at the list of their supplements and a half of them, you shouldn't take them with food. So I have to sort them out for them and say, these, you don't take them with food. These, you take it on an empty stomach. And they, that matters when you take them, how much you take them, they all matter. Yeah. And yet Susan, Susan says, you know, she was in my class uh, session with Andrew, wasn't it? Yeah. And it was so much but fun. Can I, Masami, can I share that everything I learned, I've been sharing with my household, my household is all using rubber balls to cure back problems and health problems and digestive problems. It's amazing. I have had, I yes, for the first time the next morning, I had no problems whatsoever getting out of bed. No stiffness. So Yay. sorry to interrupt everybody, but it was extraordinary. This is, is so, it was so extraordinary. I, I'm like Andrew. I'm very enthusiastic. <laughs> Thank Can't you. Can't help it. I'm going to be on your call tonight too. Thank so, you. Yes. Thank you, Susan. Thank you. That was fun. Thank and you. you know, I think I'll probably call on you tonight to share that because that's, oh, that's, my. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's one of the tools from surviving to thriving is to use the rubber balls and everybody's going, what the heck are they talking about? So um, I might have to share that here, but okay. yeah, let's okay. definitely talk about it. I'm so glad to hear that. And make sure you're drinking filtered water, remember? Oh, oh, oh yes, I, I've already, we've already started that. I ordered it immediately off your website and we got it, I believe today is Tuesday, I got it Monday. Okay. So, yeah. Oh yeah, so no, that's another part too. The only, well, uh, I'll check later, I'll re-listen, was Agni, why did we all talk about Andrew? You recommended that for Andrew and everybody else. Agni, is it? A G N I. Okay, so, so yeah, I will talk about that, everyone. So what that means is that, so Joan can, you know, even chime in too, but you know, I'm Ayurvedically trained. So I use the word Agni and Agni is spelled A-G-N-I. And it just means it's your fire, okay? It's your oh, ability. That's what it was. Yeah, that's your good. abilities to, churn the food it's to you know process your information process life changes process your ancestral pain and suffering it's your abilities to literally break down the proteins into amino acids into a usable form so you can start to heal your skin your heal your wounds and then rebuild your heart and your brain and so on and so forth so agni is basically your fire so it's located in the right place because it's located in your third chakra and it's your sunshiny yellow point and it's the place where you feel your self-esteem your strength your inner deep knowing to move forward in your life it comes from agni it comes from your third chakra so that's why i talk about it all the time because what i sense in the world right now particularly in the last i would say 20 25 years our agni has dimmed it's more like a everybody and think of agni as a campfire and in the campfire you want to have a decent campfire going so you don't have to constantly go into the woods and look for twigs 
right? And then keep this little, little fire going. You want to have a great fire where you can be roasting your marshmallows all night and singing Kumbaya. That's what you want. But most, you know, most people's agni is so small. That's this tiny little fire that you have to keep throwing the little twigs. And I call those twigs in the health and nutrition world as you snacking all the time. Snacking, snacking, snacking. You eat and snack and eat and snack and eat and snack because you have to constantly put the little twigs. So every time you have to snack and put the twigs, you don't have the time to heal your body because digestion is an energy intensive activity. So that's why I'm a fan of non-snacking. Have your meal and have some time off. That's what you want to do. So Agni, in order to build your Agni up, this is what I was saying to Andrew, Susan, that um, you need to buy betaine hydrochloric acid. And so I will type that up here again. So it's spelled B-E-T-A-I-N-E-H-C-L. So that's hydrochloric acid. This is something we all produce in our guts. We all produce this. But many of us produce very little of it. And that's going to cause you to have problems down the road, past the stomach level. This is when you'll be dealing with acid reflux, you'll be having GERD, you'll have bile that is stagnant, you won't digest food, so you might get constipated. Or I have a lady that I'm working with right now that she went to like 15 different energy workers and everything else. And when I finally got, she finally got, found me. You know, I'm the last stop for most people. They generally, people have get, gone to like 15 people before me. And so this lady showed up on Zoom and we're, I was talking. She's only 22. I looked at her and I said, you have fungus and yeast and parasites. That's what you have. So basically, we got started about a month ago on a fungus and yeast protocol. And this, uh, three days ago, she emails me in panic because I don't want to gross you out, everyone. I hope nobody's eating lunch. But she started to poop out small worms, Okay. She's pooping out parasites. And all these years, she thought this crawly feeling she had, she thought was maybe her chakra not being balanced, her chakra not being cleansed. And so sometimes we have to stop this little bit of a nonsense that is going on in the energy and the spiritual world and just say, sometimes it's parasites and sometimes it's not enough magnesium. And we need to understand that the importance of science and biology and physiology, as well as intuition, energy, and guides. Those are, they all need to be balanced. And so, you know, I guess that's where I try to straddle is I'm the bridge between that. Um, but anyway, I went from betaine to parasite. Sorry, everyone. <laughs> so I hope that answered your question, Susan. That was great. Yes. Well, I just so appreciate you come on and talk to everyone. And uh, somebody did ask about the, the um, keg and water system. Do you want to talk about that or are you going to talk about that tonight? Uh, the, oh, keg and water system? Yeah. Um, it's fine. You know, I think I have a mixed feelings about that one, to be honest. But that's probably because I'm a little bit on the scientific side when it comes to water filtering system. But I have seen, you know, I think people do okay with it. I, I think it's something that you have to do your part to research. You know, this is the part that you got to take your responsibility in research. Um, but take a look at, you know, some of the water filtering systems that I've listed on my website under resources. You should be able to find very easily. I've gone through like eight different systems and finally landed on this one small company in New York City that makes this. Um, so that's the one I use. But, you know, it's, it also depends on how you feel too. You know, when you drink that water, do, do you feel quenched? So one of the things that the, when I tuned in to Susan on the small group, you know, she didn't mention anything about water, but I said to her, I said, I want you to go get a glass of water. And she brought in the 
glass of water from the faucet. So before we did any testing on that water, six of us basically put a lot of energy towards that water and put light and love and beauty towards that water. And we held on to it until I felt that water was safe for her to drink. And then we did a testing on that water and it made a huge difference. So, you know, trust that ability also, as well as filtering abilities too. But I think, you know, water filtering system, they are good, bad, and ugly out there. The ugly is the pure and Brita kind of a system and refrigeration filtering system. Those are all basically placebo effect. They do not filter any, any chlorine. They don't filter fluoride. They don't filter microbial stuff. So, you know, just be very careful about that and thinking that that's working for you. It might work for a while because there is a placebo effect, but eventually that just isn't going to do much for your municipal water. And if you have a well water, I recommend you check your well water regularly, you know, so those are just a couple of the things I can say about that. Yeah. Let's see if we missed any other comments. Yeah, if you have any questions, I would be happy to answer some. And then here's a direct link to my webinar tonight. I thought it might be easier if you want to. Oh, okay, great. Yeah. And yeah, if you have some questions, I, I can answer tonight too. I could do that too. Yeah, if you can't think of anything right now. Yeah. Just, just a comment. Uh, I was in the, I was in the, uh, surgical ICU at the VA a little longer than most people are. Mm -hmm. uh, so, well, actually a lot longer than most people are. So I got to know pretty much all the nurses there. Most of them drink pickle juice. <laughs> really? Yep. Did you get them to drink pickle juice? No, they already do. Wow. I had no idea this was happening. Yeah. Oh, that's great. I mean, it, I just had some pickle juice before I came on the call. Um, and I have about three different pickles, so I drink from a three different kinds. Yeah. Yeah, so keep up the good work, really. Pickle juice is amazing. And, you know, I, and also Inner Eco is great, too. So. But I was also disappointed to learn that none of them have tried ice cream and grapefruit juice. <laughs> Really, you were disappointed. You yes. couldn't, you didn't have the understanding for them, huh? That but I did spread the word, just in case. <laughs> oh, that's just disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> ah, but yeah, I'm just glad your sense of humor is back. That's the most important thing. I think that's a, something we need to all work on in June, too. Keep the sense of humor, because the universe is going to make us, the universe is going to tickle us when we don't want to be tickled. So, you know, that happened to me when yeah. I, I've had, you know, the, the light brigade has been tickling me and also zebra. I don't know if you heard those conversations around those guides and, um, one I missed Masami one I missed. I talked about going on a motorcycle ride and the light brigade went with me and on the side of the road, I mean that it was, it was wild and I could see them and they, they were, they were light beings that were all around me and protecting me and sending out um, my prayers that I was saying they took out and touched people around the world and those people who wanted it. And they made it very clear to people that don't want to be touched. Uh, that don't believe this, that haven't invited in any help, we can do nothing for them. We just have to send them love and let it go. We, we can't do anything for anybody that doesn't want it. If it's somebody's soul contract, we can't do anything about that either. It is their contract. You cannot interfere with the soul contract. And they've made that really clear. Um, and I'll talk more about that in a little bit. But on the side of the road after I got started, there was a deer. And this tickled me so much to happen. It, it, it had been hit by a car and my heart just felt heavy and oh, the poor thing, I hope it didn't suffer. And as soon as I said that, one of the light brigade 
um, went over and just touched the deer and the soul of the deer rose up and ran with us. Mm. I was riding, the general was riding his motorcycle or, or his, his uh, not his motorcycle, his, um, his horse. There was a lot of horses around us. There were other motorcycle riders, even a, a snowmobile rider, <laughs> which I thought was really interesting. So we had all these people around. Well, the other day when I was channeling information, they wrote out for me because I didn't see it before, soldier soldier so s-o-u-l yeah and i didn't hear that or i didn't get that before and they said we tried to tell you the other day soul deer <laughs> soul deer oh the soul of the deer got up and i just started laughing i'm going okay you guys are funny but you got to be a little better with the human because i didn't get that <laughs> but, you gotta work on your puns yeah, S O U L D I E R. So that would be the deer. So, anyways, oh, I didn't get funny. that at the time. I didn't get that at the time. I missed it completely. And and they had to spell it out for me because it went. <laughs> so it was, that was really cool. Oh wow! I mean, I think they're just assuming that you can translate so much better, huh? It, it, it's yeah. You have to say, okay, send me some good dictionary that I can study from your language. You know, I said, make it a little more clear, you know, yeah. <laughs> just make it a little well, clear for me. I have to, I have to ask that all, yeah, I have to ask that all the time with my guys. I'm like, don't assume because it doesn't mean I get it. You have to remember I'm a human body still. I'm a human brain. So mm -hmm. please, you know, filter it through my level of understanding. So it's good to tell them and teach them too, because it's a partnership. So, and then um, I got some questions here. This is what kind of pickle juice and um, you couldn't find the pickle juice in the Whole Foods. What you need to do is you buy a pickle, like jar of pickles. And then- <laughs> Yeah, you have to bite the bullet and eat the pickles. You gotta eat the pickle and then you pour the juice. Um, but make sure that you're not buying the pickles that have ingredients that are horrible. like you know, preservatives in them or vinegar, too much vinegar in it. What you're looking for is a really traditional old fashioned pickle that has like three ingredients, literally brine and some spices in there or dill in there or whatever. That's what you want. And uh, it should be in the refrigerated section pickle. So not one of those jars that come in the shelf and shelf life till 2030 or something like that. That's not what you're looking for. That always concerns me when I see that <laughs> that long. What? I, I had bought some apples. I didn't have, um, I couldn't find any that were organic. Mm. Masami, and I left them in the, the they, a couple of them rolled to the back of the refrigerator, which I did not see. And usually, you know, when that happens, you, you find the Chia Pets a couple of months later <laughs> in the back of the refrigerator. And they were still perfect. And I'm like, I am not eating those things. They should not be perfect after that long. Mm -mm. So no. that concerned me and I'm not eating those. <laughs> it's scary. Um, and I'm sorry, I'm like jumping, but my guys are like, no, please, you got to tell them about the feet. So I'm like, okay, I'll tell them about the feet. So be quiet is what I'm telling them. <laughs> is that um, some of you might actually start to notice like feet issues this month itching of the feet, like weird things like that. Or, um, okay, so this is gonna disgust you guys, but I, I grew up in Japan, right? So 100%, okay, they, they would say 99.6% or something of the Japanese people have athlete's foot, okay? Because athlete's foot, I know, it's gross, is in the soil in Japan. So I have the athlete's foot, thank you, Japan. So my athletes but started to talk to me last night and I thought, oh, come on. So itching of the bottom of the feet, athletes foot if you have them like me, or fungus of your toes, or you are starting to feel like some of your bones feel really tight, like ankles feel really tight. Um, just pain, like a neuro neuropathy kind of thing. Those are like a neurological pain, nerve ending pains in the bottom of the feet. Things like that will actually start to talk to you. Yeah, burning on the bottom of the feet. Like 
feet stuff. It's like my guides are like, tell them about the feet. So yeah, I'm just giving you a heads up, okay? The feet will talk to you this month. So there are many ways to deal with that, obviously, and each symptoms will have a different ways of looking at it. And it sounds like it's strange to constantly bring up the pickle juice, <laughs> but actually things like pickle juice and even like beet juice. So beet, pickled beet juice is very, very helpful for, so if you don't have them, contact Mary Basse and then she will have a pickle, pickled beets, because that's all she eats. So she has a ton of them in the refrigerator. I'm sure she'll be able to spare some of them with you. So uh, beet pickled juice, that's extremely helpful for liver and gallbladder uh, flushing of the bile. So oftentimes the feet issues are stagnant liver and gallbladder, okay? So, you know, make sure you're exposing your feet to some sunlight too, because most of us just wear shoes all day. You know, humans were never eat, uh, not eat, wear shoes all the time. So make sure you take your shoes off and expose your feet to the ground, the soil, the grass, whatever. Do your yard work with them, you know, bare feet, things like that. But I just wanted to give you a little warning about feet, okay? So. One of the things I have a question about is I wear these most of the time. They're dogs. Okay. And I have my white pair that I have in the house. Uh, I color code. <laughs> so these are for around the house. And then I have other colors that I wear outside the house. But they're real cushy and comfortable. And I can even go for long, you know, five-mile walks. And they're just amazing. And I love them. But I'm always concerned about that rubber mm -hmm. on my feet all the time. And I try and go barefooted around the house a lot. I have wood floors throughout. I have teak wood in the main part of my house is that okay to so, mm, so that the you know it's the bare feet is wonderful right uh, you want to do that as often as you can but you have to remember that the as long as that you go back to the human history we didn't wear most of us most of us did not wear shoes and we were on the ground that's why it was good for you right but Modern humans have not trained our feet to be able to walk on a hardwood floor or tiled floor barefoot. That's gonna actually cause you to have lower back pain and a tightening of the Achilles tendons, and then your calves will tighten up as well. So actually it's okay that you're wearing something that is cushy like that. That's not a problem. It's just, you want to train your feet, particularly in the summer, to be barefoot in the garden or when you're doing, you know, pulling weeds and things like that. And let me, uh, my slipper is here. So let me just uh, show it to you. Okay. So the one that I wear indoor as well, and sometimes outdoor, it's called Uyghur. It's from Germany. Oh, Uyghur. And do you see these dots? Uh-huh. So it's not Birkenstocks kind of look, I mean, it's, it's kind of looks like that, but it's Uyghur. And these little dots are meant to ground you. So it has the kind of earthing abilities. And so when you touch things, you don't zap yourself and you're not um, conducting kind of different electromagnetic fields throughout your body. And then if you are in front of the computer a lot, this kind of thing can be helpful because it disperses that energy field down to the earth. So when at the computer, this is under my feet. Oh, sorry, it's like dirty. <laughs> I probably should wash that. But it's a, it's an earthing mat. It's you called mean like this. Yes, just like that. I sit because on mine. Yours is clean. Mine is dirty because <laughs> my feet are always on them. <laughs> yep, I I've got mine all the time. I all right. Every time I'm at the computer, I, I'm sitting on one. Excellent. And then, yeah, my computer always sits on this pad that's called Defender Pad. And a Defender Pad is something that you want to set your uh, computer on so that the, it doesn't create electromagnetic fields that are dangerous. So mine is kind of like this. Oh, okay. My defender Pad? On my website, on the resources page as well. See, this matches your shirt. Matches your shirt. It does. Look at that, I'd be color-coded. <laughs> Back under me. 
<laughs> good, good, good. Yeah. So yeah, my feet are on the, on it. Thank you, are, Andrew, for writing that in there. Uyghur. Oh yeah, thank you. Yeah, Uyghur. Um, I found it online. I had to do quite a bit of search to find that one because there's just not a lot of slippers out there that are grounded like this. And I'm not a fan of flip flops, everyone. Uh, I see a lot of younger generations. Oh. You know, sounds like I'm an old generation, but I am older than that younger generation. Um, and flip flops are really causing many of these young people to have terrible postures. And I'm sure you've noticed that the many of them have the you know cell phone posture. You know, neck is kind of folded like this. Um, they tuck their glutes so their pelvic floor is in the wrong direction, rotation wise. Um, and their flip flops are making them just drag their feet. So, you know, if you do wear flip-flops a lot at, uh, in the summer, please don't. And wear something like Cindy showed that has a little bit of a band that will protect the tops of your foot and then hold your ankle in the right place. So that, that is very important because so many of the people that I work with, in, they're in younger generations, their arches have collapsed so much that, that their feet, just are just flat. They didn't. They weren't born flat-footed, but their feet have collapsed. And when you collapse your arches, you're going to collapse the inners of your muscles. So that's going to impact everything from even like bladder issues to kidney issues to all the meridians that run through that inner part of your body. So make sure you are not wearing flip-flops. Yeah. It was so funny at my granddaughter's graduation. They said absolutely no flip flops. Every girl had on flip flops, <laughs> and half the guys. <laughs> oh, that's funny. And they said absolutely none. Ha! Yeah. <laughs> okay. Any other questions that we have over here that we miss? Um, let's see the sides of my feet become numb for months and I'm, I don't have any foot issues right now these stop because I have um, Morton's neuroma oh, okay from running yeah and um, when I wear these I don't it doesn't hurt at all so yeah so I don't I don't recommend Cindy for you to be barefoot in the house with the hardwood floor like that that will cause you to have other issues and I that is generally correct with almost everybody we're just we have softer pads you know we weren't born with the harder pads like what humans used to be so and we didn't train them so please don't start to say oh my gosh i'm gonna start to do bare feet all over the place and inside outside that's gonna cause you to have other issues so just take some time to be outside barefoot that's that's kind of all you need to be doing yeah and i i do that I'm, I'm pretty good at that. Good, um, good, and good. Mike says, um, how about numbing hands? That's a big question. I mean, that's neuropathy kind of thing possibly, but you could be having some, when I tune into you, Mike, I feel like you have a shoulder neck pain. And yeah, so I think that's a little bit more nerve, nerve related. So that's what I sense. Pinch, pinch nerve. Yeah. In my, um, and then Bernadette has had, had it too though. Well, so we've been working with a lot of painting and chemicals and stuff, and I think all of that for me is kind of a source. Um, and yeah, our feet hurt too. <laughs> yeah, um, both of you, the, the symptoms might be similar, but the causes are different. Mike, yours is a pinched nerve, and you can do a little bit of a maybe shoulder rolls. You know, like Cindy will take you through that on the Sunday morning before going to the viewing room. Things like that would be good. Things like this would be really good to stretch. Um, you know, lateral movements are always very important for us. Okay, so try to get that pinchy kind of a muscle tensions out. And you know, I think for for you, Bernadette, um, it, it is comes back to uh, your liver and gallbladder. Yeah, so and we'll start uh, working that here soon in the next couple of weeks. But right yeah. now so discombobulated i couldn't you know be on a level platform so we'll start yeah. and i've had physical therapy several times for my pinched nerve i got hurt on the on job 
Oh, okay, yeah, because when I tuned into you, I felt the pinched nerve right away. So I knew that's what the issue was for you. Um, it's something that it's, you know, body has memories too. So your muscles tend to spasm in that particular area. So you do want to work on that. And uh, the, the tool that I kind of visually see when I tune into you is using like a tennis ball and get your armpits. So it's this area. I call this, I hope I shaved it, but oh, God knows. You know. <laughs> When's the last time I shaved anybody? Yeah, when's the last time I shaved? I have no idea, but thank God I'm half Asian, so I'm not, I'm not very hairy. But anyway, use a tennis ball, and there's this part of the muscle called teres minor and major, and some people call it differently, but I call it teres minor and major, but um, it terrorizes you. So I would say uh, look up the images on Google where teres minor and major is, and then that's where you want to stick the tennis ball, while you're on the ground and reach your arms like this. So imagine I'm on the ground, the tennis goes here, and then just kind of roll it side to side like this, and then go up and down just a little bit, just in that region. So this part of the armpit right here, I consider that like a central station or like a pen station of the New York City, you know, where all the lines come together. It's very jam packed in that spot. So that area gets so rigid and sometimes we'll rotate our shoulders like this, okay? That causes you to pinch the nerves more. So, but I find that a lot of physical therapists don't address that, you know? And when I used to work with people's bodies with my own hands, because I used to do hands-on work for people, people used to just say that I was masochistic and sadistic, 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 is that the word? Yeah. Uh, because because I would go to the places that no one would dare to touch. And so I would go to like inner groins, you know, I'll go to like piriformis, I'll go right between the butt cheeks and I will go right on the armpit. And people are like, no one has ever worked on those areas. But the fact is, if you don't release that jammed up train station there, your nerve, a pinched nerve won't get better. So try that little trick. Well, I was just noticing, I tell them, I was like, you're slouching forward with your, I was like, put, put your shoulders back. Yeah. I didn't even notice he does that. Well, you, you can't, it's not really about your effort. You know, you can't effort your body to sit up straight, really, when you have that kind of a tightness in the back it will just rotate you forward. It's just a natural way that you sit. So you don't mean to, but that's what happens. So you have to release that area, then you'll naturally open up. Poor guy, he's gonna suffer tonight. Somebody's gonna be doing a little massage muscles <laughs> stretching under his arm. <laughs> Thank you, Masami. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, Bernadette was in my class too. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yep. Well, I also want to say I do have that water filtration system that she's talking about at, throughout the whole house, and it is just wonderful. We've had it now probably for about three years, yep. Yep. and I did some research too, and it was like the best room we could find, and we love it. So same yeah. one. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I that's after years of researching, I landed on that whole house water filtering, and it's worth it because. You know, it lasts about 10 years too. So when you start adding up the prices, it just made sense to me. And I want my skin, which is my largest organ, to have good water on me. You know, so it's not just filtered water you drink, but what do you put on your face and what are you soaking in? And also when you take a shower and when it's warm in the shower, the steam is where your vape vaped you know, neurotoxic heavy metals and toxin stuff is. All your, all your crap is in the steam. So you're actually breathing in. So if you have asthma or if you have lung issues, you have any physical issues, that's, that's poisonous thing you're breathing in. So that's why whole house water filter is the best way to go if you can you know, afford it. Yeah. Thank you for saying that because that's, that's really important. And Alice yes. was asking about the yeah. mat, the grounding mat that I use, and, and, and it's earth, earthing, the earthing mat. 
is the yeah. brand. Yeah. By Cliff, what is his name, Cliff? Uh, I forget. I'll think of it after a while. He almost had her hand up for a long okay. time. Okay, go ahead. What you got, Hilma? Clint Ober. Clint Ober, that's it, thank you. Hilma, you still there? I sent Cindy a thing. He's got a, uh, he's going to have a, a program on, on Thursday, Clint. Oh, Clint is? Okay. Yeah, it, there's I his I sent book. it to you. Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you. Yeah, I love him. Love this book. Yeah, and if you order any products from him, you know, they will send that book to you for free. So mm -hmm. it's a great way to get to know. But yeah, I, I have earthing sheets and earthing mats and you know. I've got everything too. Everything earthing, yeah. Yep. So, um, it, it is important. So, and, and it gets, yep. if you have night terrors, it gets rid of the night terrors. People don't realize that night terrors, a lot of times it's static electricity built up in your body and it causes those night terrors. And I heard this years ago on a, on a show and I had them all the time. And they said, get out and ground yourself, you know, and to rub your feet in the grass and, and diffuse your body with the static and I did that and I stopped having night terrors. And anytime that I have that problem, I just run outside and do that. Well, I haven't had them since I've had the earthing mat. So I used to that's get them great. all the time. Yeah, that's great. It, it's dream, dream is another huge topic too. Someday we will address that. But you know, nighttime, we spend one third of our lives sleeping, hopefully, or in bed anyway. Mm -hmm. So it is important to address that at some point. And it's a difficult topic for many of us. A lot of us really don't sleep through the night and don't feel rested. And, but, you know, during the sleep is when we're repairing and detoxing and, you know, brain is literally going into enema mode. So did you know that the, your brain shrinks by 60% during your sleep? It, it shrinks 60%. So mm -hmm. that's, that means it's squeezing the excess memories and excess information you don't need and all the toxins you don't need. It's literally squeezing and then releasing that out of your lymphatic system. So yeah. Yeah. And then the website, yes, it is earthing.com. Yep. Yeah. Great. Any other questions? Um, Tony says, thank you, Sami. Ah, love you too, Tony. <laughs> and Cindy, Helma is uh, waiting to ask a question. Yeah. Oh, I thought you unmuted her already. No. Okay. Helma, you want to unmute yourself? Well, it's not. She's. Huh. I don't think she's there. Mute her. It's, I'm not seeing her. Yeah, she's there. She might have had to go to the bathroom. <laughs> okay, I'm not seeing her now. Hmm. Yeah, I hope the um, June forecast was helpful, or hopefully it would yes. be helpful. So, very much so. And I, everybody, the her program is tonight. Just follow that link. Can you move the link to the bottom again, Andrew, so everybody can get? I, I got it. it. Here it is. Oh, and okay. She's got it. All right. You, that, you can go right there and, and that's get the, Yeah, that's a direct um, connection to tonight's call. Yeah. Okay, great. And I only do it once a month because it takes me weeks to prepare. So I just, I can't keep doing too many of these because I don't know. I, like I said, I wish I could just be not so much of a nerd, but I study so much all the time. So, but I'm trying to pull back and I am taking a little vacation next week. And I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna go to this area called Pagosa Springs in Colorado and soak in some mineral water. So, you know, that'll be really nice. Cool. Oh, that's great. No. So, Sami is helpful. Okay, good. Wonderful. Yeah, I know there's a lot going on. Um, this month is pretty active astrologically to a lot of eclipses and uh, Mercury retrograde has officially started today, everyone. So it's gradual, obviously. What is it? Mer Mercury retrograde started today. today. Yeah, so it starts really gradual, right? It expands for over a month. So mm -hmm. I always get the long calendar 
So I'm prepared. So I don't just focus on the day that retrogrades, but it's the tail effect, you know, just, just a little before. And it's already starting a little bit today, and I've already had some glitches today. So, um, yeah, just to prepare. It's yep. the universe is tickling us. So whether you like it or not. <laughs> and and we have a full moon coming up. Yes. So and eclipse. So yes. and Laurel, I will talk more about that on Friday night. Yeah, Friday is yep. a big Friday is a big 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 one. Yep. Yeah. So. so Thursday, we've decided not to have a call, everybody, because Ferris' son is here, and we want to get everything done that we can, and we just need that extra time. So we won't do Thursday this week. We'll cancel that one. We will do Friday night. As always, bring your pickle juice to toast and, and your wine or your wine. Just depends on what, what you have. Lately, I've been more pickle juice, and I haven't been tolerating the wine. For, I, I did it for about a month. You know, that's longer than my, my doctor keeps telling me all the time that she wants me to do it. And I just, I'll do it for a little while. And, eh. um, but anyways, we'll see. <laughs> but we'll do that. And then we will do, um, of course, our Sunday service. And one thing that I wanted to talk about just very briefly here is, um, and I said this in the newsletter, yesterday at 11.11, I was asked to pray now, and I couldn't even stop the words from coming out. I started praying out loud, and I just said, everybody pray with me in the house. And we know what happened yesterday. And um, somebody had asked me if, if the darkness that I saw coming, the freight train, I called it a freight train, and I felt like I was being beat on, like I kept going like this. And, and I talked about that on a call a couple of weeks ago. And um, we now know what that's all about. But the, the problem did not just um, come from um, Minneapolis and what is going on there, the, the murder of this young man and all the riots now that are going on. It's, it's more than that. There has been something else that's been set into motion. And it's important, again, I said this earlier, and I am being reminded of this um, by God and all my other guides all the time, is when there is a soul contract in place, all we can do is send light into a situation, but we cannot change that because it's somebody else's contract, it's not ours. If it involves us, that's the only reason we have the right to step in and say, no, not me, and send light into it. But we can't stop something from happening. And, and I hope that that's clear. And Masami, can you say anything on that? Can you, uh, how do you feel about that? Well, there's a lot going on. Um... Yeah, and I hadn't watched the news in days, so I didn't. I literally did not know that anything was going on until after I said yesterday, "Everybody, start praying. Everybody, just pray." And we prayed out loud together as a family. And um, I didn't know what was going on. And then afterwards, the Pharisees <laughs> started doing the research and then let me know what was happening. And I didn't know, and I do know more, and I have a question for everybody. How honest do you want me to be? How direct do you want me to be? There are things that I do not say because I don't want to appear negative, but for me, it is not negative, it is the facts. It's just the facts of what is happening, and it is not, um, I'm not sending energy into it. I, it's just being reported to me. This is what's coming. And I can't stop that from, you know, e either I want the truth or I don't. And I have always been a truth seeker, whether it's for my health, our environment, whatever it is, I seek the truth. And if this is the truth of what is going on, I need to know from everybody how honest or how, how much detail do you want to know? Because sometimes... I feel uncomfortable and people will say, oh, quit putting energy in that. You're sin. No, I'm not. I'm just reporting facts. And remember, all I am is a channel. And Ferris's son 
um, was asking me about this, um, in fact, today. And he said, well, don't you, you know, can't you just stop it? And I said, no, that would engage the brain. I'm a channel, which means that I just have a tube. <laughs> I, am a, I am a conduit. I am a, you know, a PVC pipe. And it's just piped in. And I have to, to be objective when I get this information. When I told you I started, when I started going to the world viewing room, I kept getting kicked out because I would judge things. That was a training ground for me. That was training me to look at the information objectively and not judge it. I can still send energy, love and light. I can still pray around it. I can affect things that affect me, but I can't change somebody else's, you know, what's going on in someone else's life because it's their contract, not mine. And does it affect me? Yes, because we also have a world contract. That's what we can affect the most by being happy, by playing the Christmas music, by living in joy, by dancing. We've got to, even if we don't feel like it, we've got to do it. And I, you know, Ferris has seen, I take the kitties and the dog and I dance around the room and I make up songs all day long. And, you know, the, I, I'm pretty darn goofy. If you ever looked in my windows, you'd see just how goofy I am around the house and just allowing joy to penetrate my body because that I have control over that I have an effect on, but I can't change someone else's soul contract. So I'm hoping that I am clear on that. So when I'm reporting, this is clear information that I am channeling and I, I don't judge it. I just get it. Can you tell us what it was so that we don't, King here in uh, mystery until our next call, since it's going to be a while. Yeah, it, I, I'll talk about it probably more on Sunday. I'm still getting some information. Oh, I'd like to know a little bit about. now. I, I don't want to just hang out. Right. Like yeah, I'm going to tell you now. How many? Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and tell you now. One of the things that I saw this last week, and I didn't know if I should say this or not, and I kept getting told, you must be completely honest. I promised that. And withholding information didn't feel right. And yet, because of some of the emails I received, that's what caused it. And I just thought, okay, I'm going to ask everybody what they want. And one of the things that I got when, when the general threw down, by the way, I saw my typo in the email. <laughs> there was too many distractions going on. Um, with a lot of people in the house. Anyways, when the general threw down a, a flag in front of me at my feet, he just threw it and it stuck in the ground. And as I told you on Sunday, when I, I couldn't see it because it was like at its side and I couldn't see just that the, it was a flag. And it looked like one of those flags, you know, when they're digging up and they're gonna do some groundwork, you know, um, laying, lines or something like that you know it's just it started off as a small one and i moved to the side and i saw that it was white and i thought well that's boring and then i heard surrender and i went oh that's right we're supposed to surrender and then all of a sudden that flag began to grow and it became bigger and then i told you that as mine changed there was a drop of blood that hit it we are all of one blood and it splattered and then it kept splattering and splattering and I told more death is coming. And so when I say that, this does not have to be you. You can protect you, you can take care of you, but there are other people that their soul contracts, everybody are involved in this. This is not to be negative, this is their choice and we can't stop that, so bloodshed will happen. That doesn't mean it's going to be in your area. I don't know where it is. I don't have a clear picture of that, but there will be blood that is shed. Of course, after that happened, that you know, I don't know if it was after or before that the, that the young man was um, killed. And, um, and I'm told there's going to be more of this. I've been also telling you for, I, I don't know how many weeks now, um, 
months, I think it's actually been, that in July, 77,000 people by July, it is not all COVID related. I now know that for sure. So 77,000 more, what we can do, we have an effect on that because it's global, it's part of our contract, we can send the light in. So again, I'm not being negative, I'm only telling you what I'm getting. And for me, knowledge is power, you can't change something that you don't acknowledge. So you acknowledge it, okay, this is what is in the horizon. So what can we do about it? Just like we did yesterday, we all stopped and we prayed and we sent in energy. And all day yesterday, I held everyone in prayer, our whole community. I sent the light brigade out and they were touching people. And then there were people, like I said, they hold up their hand like, nope, I don't believe in you. They'll either say, I don't believe in you and they'll hold up their hand or they'll just say, no, it's part of my soul contract. And it's almost like I can hear them say that. This is my contract and I've chosen to experience this so that I can, um, you know, I've got some karma or something, you know, they've got something that they came in to learn and I can't, I can't change that for somebody. That is their choice. So I hope that I'm being clear on this. Again, I'm not being negative. It is just what I get. And I started questioning my own concerns just because of emails and it didn't feel right to me, but I wanted to ask. So that's why I brought it up today. I do see bloodshed and I see more sick people and there's gonna be a combination. And as I told you, you know, a few weeks ago when I brought this up the first time, I saw something else coming. I didn't know what it was. It just felt like it was hitting me, like a, it was a freight train. And as I said on that call, we can't stop it, but I knew we could slow it down and we can slow it. And it doesn't have to be 77,000 people. And together we must please, please, please keep the prayer wave going and keep the joy coming. You know, I first thing in the morning, I grab my puppy as I tell, tell everybody, I go to the window and say, What's this day all about? You know, in my baby voice that I talked to her, What's this day going to be all about? It's going to be about green grass and flowers and love. Every day is about love and every day is about joy if we choose it. And I tell my dog this every morning, and then we do a little dance and goofy things around the house. And Ferris just kind of rolls his eyes and goes, oh gosh. <laughs> I, yes, I talk, baby talk to my animals, but it brings me joy. It brings me joy. So what brings you joy? We, if we hold ourselves in joy, it puts a protective shield around us that as long as this is not your contract that you agreed to, you are protected. You are protected. And remember, you can follow the rules. You can, you can follow like uh, the guidelines that are given us. Do this, 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 follow the guidelines and sit and join. So Masami, do you have anything to say? That. Um, yeah, thanks for sharing that. I like to chew on things like that. I like to let it digest in me. But, um, you know, I, because I put it through the more of a, because my work is so oriented towards physical body, I say to people often, and I've been saying this more and more, but it's like, please don't shoot the messenger kind of a thing. Because a lot of people, yeah, a lot of people don't want to hear the truth. Um, and even though we say, no, tell me the truth, what do you see and what do I need to do? But then when I really tell them, they're like, oh, that's not what I wanted to hear. So I think it is important to really filter that kind of your own habitual patterns. And like I said, June is the time that you trust that you're grounded, but stop grounding so much and start to angulate you know start moving with what's coming at us we don't know what this is so you kind of move with it and you know you know cindy i shared that the my name means truth right masami means truth and it was a very difficult name to be given to to remain in that place of truthfulness um it's much easier to be 
um, maybe a messenger of always light and joy and love. Absolutely. But I feel for you, Cindy, too. And I think many of us, I can, I think, can relate to the fact that many of us feel like, are, are we, I feel burdened sometimes, to be honest with you. I think that's what I was grieving about last month in May. I shared with you that mm -hmm. I was grieving. I was in sorrow. I was experimenting with this wide range of emotions between grief and gratitude. And it was a huge range in between. Because I felt like, why, universe? Why would you give me a job or a position or a conduit? Why would you put me in this conduit position so that I have to speak the truth? And the truth isn't always so sparkly and sweet and cutesy and fairy, fairy tale like. Like, that's not what I'm able to say to you. But I think we can handle it. I actually believe, Cindy, that all of us signed a contract to be here right now. Yep. So I we're, agree. none of us are outside of this contract that we're, we are in. Like it or not, I say, come in, come into this moving river and let's hold hands and let's float together. And so there's a part of you that have to have courage to dive in. And you also have to trust to hold each other's hands and know that the, we all signed this contract to be here now. So I strongly feel that. So there's a, a balance, I think, in that truth that the, you will share with us in this, come, you know, this month throughout the time. Um, I think from the chat, I can see we're all ready to receive that truth. But there are times it will be uncomfortable. It will feel like you can't digest that very well. There'll be times that you'll feel like a heartburn comes up because Cindy shared the truth with you. It'll burn you. Sometimes it will make you feel very constipated. You can't sleep at night because of the truth. But even in that, always know that, that you are supported. So it's that, hold that to paradigms. That the paradigm exists and then you have the power to hold that, hold that to two very seemingly different truths. So be joyful and dance and know that the, you can believe in your power. And yes, there will be difficulties. I feel it. I've been feeling this for the last three weeks straight. Particularly we've been talking. We've talked about that. We've been yeah. feeling the same thing. Yeah. We've said this is confirmation, which is why we're working on the seven plagues. We haven't forgotten that. Just, you know, Ferris comes first. <laughs> And I haven't been feeling like I could be settled down enough to do that this week yeah. either. You know, so yeah. it'll be in the coming weeks. But it, so it's, it's uh, we are being challenged to say, can you hold the two truths? Truth isn't just one, but can you hold the two truths at the same time and remain grounded and uplifted at the same time? And the answer is hell yes. Hell yes, we are here to do that. And then when you get bogged down by that two truths, you show up to these calls, you show up to my calls, you show up to other groups, and then you reach out and then you, but you've got to dive in, you gotta trust it and leap and then go to that moving, moving, flowing river because it's calling us to all dive in. So that's, you know, so I, I'm so grateful to your courage, Cindy for sharing this because it requires human courage to speak about it, to be the channel. Um, it's a, you know, sometimes I, you know, I'm, I hope I'm okay that I'm fully honest here, but there are times that I wish I was um, uh, maybe a yoga teacher, the, you know, I used to teach yoga and I was just teaching yoga and teaching them to eat rainbow color foods and you'll be just fine. Like, but that's not the truth. Maybe there is a grain of truth there, obviously. But I know I'm, I'm channeling too much more. That I, that's not the only message I can give you. I'm sorry. I can't. You know, sometimes I have to call, call on people and say, you got parasites. You got fatty liver disease. Like, I have to actually say these things to people. So I'm, I'm just grateful, Cindy, that you are this role model for me that are um, courageously out there for me and I get to enjoy 
your light because I get to follow your light. So thank and, you. And ditto. And ditto. <laughs> We're on this journey. We're all on this journey together. Thank you. And I, the first big channeled information, remember what I said, everybody, I will not be the only one. You will be confirming. Look at when I, when I felt it coming, when I announced it to everybody, something is coming. It's not COVID, but there's something else coming and it's a freight train. I feel like it's beating on me, you know, but we can slow it down. When I said that that day, I said, we've got to surround ourselves with joy. What happened? Everybody started showing their Christmas decorations. I said, put up Christmas decorations, listen to Christmas music. And everybody already had it. So we confirmed it for each other. We all know it's just, do we push it away? Do you, you know, just because, you know, if a tree falls in the forest, do you still hear it? You know, that, that old <laughs> adage, you know, it, it still happens. It still happens. And I am not sitting in fear. I have, I don't have fear. For me, it's just information. It's, it's a tube that comes down like this. And I've been trained now to not judge it, but to, but be amazed by the information. I'm amazed by things. When I went on that motorcycle ride and I had the whole light brigade and what was cool, Masami, I don't know if you were there or not, the faster we went, all of a sudden we became of one. We were one light. There wasn't just all these individual lights. We became one as we circled the world and time, there was no time. It was all right now. And I knew that as we were doing it and it was the greatest sensation in the world. And we are one and we have an effect over what's going on. We do have an effect. We don't have to all go out there and march. We don't have to all act in some way. Each one of us are being called to do something. It's up to us for, to, to act on whatever we're being called to do. So mm -hmm. I love it. Yeah. I We're do. all in sync here. And here's a safe place for us to share what we're getting. Well, and then I think the death is literal as well as there'll be death of even part of you will die in this process. I think no one's going to come out of this unscathed it's part of us will die in this process. And it may be your old stubborn way will die. Maybe certain um, things that you've held on to, the belief system may die. I don't know. Maybe you may even, you know, get into an accident and you lose a hand. I mean, that's a death of a hand. Something like that could happen. So it's not just a death of human beings, um, but, and it can I, be a, yeah. the death of a, of a, a belief different, system. Yes. It, it's outdated. I'm sorry, but it's outdated and things are starting to come out. It's like we've been putting the cortisol cream on your wounded rashes and it's disgusting that you've been putting the ra you know, rash cream and all of a sudden the cream stopped working. Mm -hmm. And then it's all boils coming out and it's crap is coming out and it needs to come out. It, it so, has to. It is. is, it is. Cr creating change isn't pretty. And in my book that I'm writing, you know, I, I start off with the story of Yellowstone Park burning, you know, burning to the ground. And what happens after everything burns down? Well, that ash actually starts to um, new, helps uh, create new growth. And so you've got new things that start to come up. What's the first animal that comes in? The wolves are the first animals to come in. They're scavengers. And, and the, um, the next animals to come in, uh, there's the scavenger type animals, the hunters will come in, the, the wolves. And what's the next animal that comes in? It is the beaver. The beaver creates an ecosystem. So I literally believe that that beaver, which is also a slang many years ago during the, the CD, or what is it, Ferris? CD. Yeah, days. <laughs> yeah, and they would call a woman a beaver. And um, I literally believe that it's going to be a female that comes in and creates change. I 
absolutely believe that. 2013 was the divine feminine, the awakening of the divine feminine. We've seen it roll into power and we're going to see that more and more. And so I absolutely believe that we are going, that the beaver that's going to come in, that's going to create the real change is going to be a woman. I just think it's, you know, kind of ironic, but it's one of those. Oh let's just God, I can, about just, it. I can just see Twitter now. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know um i'm gonna bring it back to the body again but there's this idea about it's called herxheimer reaction and it's herxing is what we call it but when we take people through detox protocols or heavy metal detox or any kind of a fungal yeast you know whatever that may be to change that person's old habits to a new new clean way of living many people go through Herxheimer reactions, which is, it's not very fun. It's like you got flu. You feel like you're sicker than before. You start to throw up. You're going to have more rashes than before. So you do go through, like more things will come up. That's what's exactly it's a healing what's crisis. Happening. Yeah, it yeah. is. And it's, that's what's happening right now. So we need to look at this as a path to the healing, but we also have to support that. Otherwise, Herxheimer can actually go backwards and it starts to poison you again. And then you, can, you may start to go back into the old habits again also. So this is a very critical moment. Next three months, I tell you, it's gonna be critical time in our history that we move the Herxheimer, the healing reactions towards actual healing and not the other way around that we're gonna toxify ourselves again with the old way of thinking, the ones that we've been suppressing, that's all coming out. And you know, as an immigrant, and as somebody that didn't speak a word of English when I moved here in high school, and lived in a very racist part of the United States, and grew up in a racist part of Japan, um, racism is real, you know? So when people say, oh, I'm not racist, you know, I don't know about that. And I question that about myself too. Am I racist? You know, do I look at the situations differently? Do I look at, you know, so-called white Americans from a very different perspectives? And I do as somebody that's a mixed race and, 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 and an immigrant. I do. I do. And so I am getting truthful towards who I am too. And I've been questioning that to myself since this all started to really blow up. And this is not new, this is old. This is as old as human history. What's unfolding is as old as this universe since we've been here on this earth. So, you know, it's just like, let's sit back and be truthful within yourself first. Let's peel away our dead weight. Let's peel away our dead thinking. Let's peel away our outdated mode of living within ourselves first then I think we can go in to support this process. So it really, to me, starts here. It starts at my, my space. Mm -hmm. yeah. And remember the, the flag, the first drop, I knew that it was bloodshed, but then when it became blood, we were one blood. We are one blood. We always need to remember that. The blood color is the same. You know, I just, and... You know, George and people like George need to be more than just a Twitter hashtag. We need to do something about it. We need to create change. These are beautiful human lives. And we need to do something, whether it is sending light into it, which we can all do. If that's what we're being called to do, there's some pretty powerful healers here. Um, when I was going through, when they told me I had MS and I went to a Reiki group, the power in that group, and you know, the, Gary would say, but they're just going like this across your body. Exactly. And the change in my body was amazing. You can do so much from your own chair. What are you being called to do? Do that. I'm being called to channel. And I now fully understand why it started, why I needed to get sick early, 
why, um, why I had to astro travel out of my body. I believe I wouldn't be here because when I looked at the end of the year, I wasn't here. Ferris wasn't here. Look what's happened. We affected a change. I'm still here and Ferris is still here. We affected a change. So we can create change. We have seen that miraculous, that, uh, you know, those, those miracles unfold in front of our own eyes. That is the proof. I was told when I first started channeling all this, there would always be evidence. There would always be proof. Here we go. You can't get bigger than that. We said this was going to be a hard opening time. Well, Ferris took a little too lit literally. <laughs> and that's, <laughs> he's our mascot. <laughs> that's, you know, and it's time for us to open our hearts and understand that we are of one blood. I do want to urge people when you're sending light to a situation, unless you know, don't try to decide what the outcome should be. Right. Because, Perfectly said. Because we don't necessarily know what those folks' soul contract is. Yeah, that's when I when I would send that energy and I would meet with a block and it, and that's a hard thing to do it is because you want to pressure it you, you know it. you can't you just got to go you know it's not my it's not my place it is their decision and I just have to say bless you and move on you know I'm I'm still I can surround your bubble that you're in with light or the people around you if they accept it but i can't none of us can change outcomes like that and, and we we've we've gone long enough today but i do want to end with one question okay rainbow colored foods does that mean i can just live off of fruit loops because <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that would be cool I mean, test you on that. Let me see. Let me muscle test you on it. No. Okay. <laughs> I, have I have to test it. Absolutely no. Never mind. <laughs> yellow um, Ferris. This is mango. Yellow. Ooh, um, ooh. Start with that. <clears throat> That's a um, beginning. It's so good to see your beautiful face. We called on you a few minutes ago and you weren't there. Sorry, I was answering the door. Can oh, okay. Ask, can I ask a quick question of Masaki? Yeah. Yes. Okay, um, a dear friend of mine is in the ICU and I'm about to go visit her and I will be visiting her daily. Unfortunately, the hospital has set up scanners and I'm very opposed to going through scanners. I always opt out at the airport and I've you know, done battle with the security department at the hospital like, you know, I'll take off all my clothes in the ladies room and down, you know, I don't want to go through the scanner. They won't do it. So why aren't we given a choice at a hospital? But we are not at this point. So I wonder if there's any suggestions of what I could do, you know, call on my angels when I walk through the scanner. Um, I have a piece of tourmaline in my bra. <laughs> I'm wearing a biogeometry protection. Any ideas? So, I mean, make sure you're not wearing like wired bra and things like that. No, right? never. Okay, um, and you know the the little black stone Shanghai, I think it's called Shanghai brace. Okay, so you got them on. I yeah. would put them on both wrists and your ankles. Oh, okay. Yeah, I would get through the per metal. Um, also, you're wearing all that stuff that, that you need to be doing. Um, obviously, you need to go in there, bubble yourself, you know, put yourself inside the bubble. And when you come out, you got to put it in your bubble and then make sure to drink clean water when you get through that so they can flush things out and you okay. can clean things out. Okay. And the best thing, you know, I don't know, in the hospital, you have the chance to take your shoes off and land on the grass, but that's the best way to release the EMS. Okay. Yeah. Because... Great. The electricity, um, dirty electricity, basically will flow through your body. So the best way to discharge that is through feet. So you stand on uh, the grass. So that'll okay. be the 
good way to do. But if you can't, come home and do that. Yeah, because no doubt they sprayed the grounds with Roundup, right? Yeah. 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 So, yeah. yeah. Um, but you know, it still gets I, me that they sell that. Ugh, don't get me I, started. <laughs> Thank you at the point that the paradox exists in the world. Toxins exist, okay? You are going to be poisoned. I mean, it's just, that's just what it is, okay? But you also have to trust your innate abilities to be able to heal and detox and be protected. So there's that trust part also. So there's that truth and there's this truth. So always remember you got powerful truths are supporting you. So you're not the victim of this, you know, that you can protect it, do all that you can, all your practices, eat well, do the cleansing foods, maybe even drink some liver detox tea when you get home, but also believe that the, you are fine. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's and so as, far as, the, as far as Thank the scanner you. is concerned, uh, you have to pick your battles. Uh, just be glad that you're able to get to the ICU. Cindy couldn't come see me. I couldn't, I couldn't even get in the whole time. Wow. Yeah. We could FaceTime. And, yeah, that's, that's it. And it just, that made it worse feeling. Yeah, very good point, Ferris. That's, that's the truth, really. Yeah, so I love that. So it's like, you know, I told you that I've been, battle, not battling, but I'm working range of motion between grief and gratitude. And so it's that you, you want to be grateful. You can visit your friend. Yes. Yeah. There's okay. a grieving, grieving side too. And it's okay. That's, that's the range you live in. So I love that you, you brought that up, Ferris. Thanks. For By the way, that. I want to say to Richard that LOL wasn't for you. You just messaged me at the same privately at the same time that I was sending it to all when Mary made her comment, no fruit loops. Um, so that's what that was for. It wasn't for you. <laughs> he wants to share his poem and yes, I absolutely want you to. And I'm going, the, the poem that they've promised me is, has been coming and I've just been writing it a few in, in moments that I have that are free, I will write for a little bit and I'm just writing down, I, I, it's disjointed right now and I just write down a few lines here and there. So Ferris, if you see weird lines laying around, that's what it is. I just write it down and I keep going <laughs> to get things done because it, it, that's how it's coming right now, how it has to. I just to. figured I was still hallucinating. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, let me see, what else? Did I miss anybody else? Um, yes, that's called a healing crisis, yes. Yeah, and... Um, oh, and by the way, for Zara, uh, yeah. I came across, there are at least a couple of companies that are actually bottling pickle juice. Just the pickle juice. Really? Yeah, uh, you'll have to look for them. And I don't know if you can find it in stores or if you had to order online or whatever, but it does exist. Do you have to be worried about the sodium in pickle juice? Because pickles are usually pretty salty. As far as I'm concerned, the more salt, the better. Yeah, but he can't have it. We've already found mm -hmm. that out because his legs blew up like this. I'm wondering awful. how the pickle juice works for him. Yeah, in small, he's just drinking very tiny little bit. He it doesn't have to have a lot. It, use it as a medicine. It's not like the chug that thing. Yeah. Yeah. No, I did that the first night that we had some and I drank way too much and well, nothing like cleansing the system. <laughs> so, <laughs> and uh, by the way, behind Ferris, if you look at him, um, there's, there's all this stuff in the hallway. <laughs> Still, so. Oh, I forgot that was all there. Yep, all that stuff is hanging out in the back there. So if you guys see all that, because everything got moved into the hallway while, while we were painting and redoing things. <laughs> so everything is still a bit upside down, but we're getting there. We're getting there. Um, and for those of you who asked about Penny, no, she hasn't come back. The boys spotted her and we have spotted her, but she won't come to the house. And um to even uh um rascal ran her off i thought it was just my cats but even rascal 
Well, I, I don't know if he ran her off or was running towards her and it scared her and she left. So I don't know what we're going to be able to do, but she, she's not there all the time, but we do see her. They're can sighted. Punk, can Pumpkin come and help? It would be um, nice. Ferris, you have to ask. Yeah, it would be great. Yeah. Okay, three more comments. Um, let's see. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, no, no fruit loops. <laughs> He's, everything tastes bad to Ferris. I feel so bad and we're trying to come up with some recipes and stuff and we've had some. About that tomorrow, okay? Because the taste buds have a lot to do with the mineral deficiency, so we'll get into it. Um, and maybe Cindy, I don't know, you have time tomorrow, but well, Ferris, you just decide if you need Cindy be, be there to take notes and you know, like or whatever, we can just decide. Okay. So, all right, but yeah, um, mineral deficiencies have a lot to do with the taste buds, so that can get built back up. Hmm. Okay, well, it's time to say good night, Gracie. Yes. Uh, <laughs> by the way, I just want to say this really quickly. Untethered soul. It's always amazing how things, uh, I won't read the whole thing, but face everything and rise. That's the, and I'll take a picture of this and just post it for everybody. I won't take time to read through all of it. But anyways, that is so appropriate because we are going to rise. We're going to rise up and be joyful. So go uh, take pictures of yourself dancing or videos and post them. I wanna see everybody dancing. If you've got a cool song that you made up, post that, yep. And we're just gonna move. And, and like Joan was showing us the other day, you know, the, the figure eights that we were making. Yes, that I've been doing that too, Joan. I don't know if she's still on. That was very cool. So um, awesome. <laughs> everybody I love you so much and again no call tomorrow um did did uh Carla had something that she wanted to share real quick is she still there can I just stick in real no, quick? I'm good I'm complete sorry you're you're complete okay the infinity wave I've been putting that over the world and everything beautiful and my condo and that that, that feels very right it, it does to me too. Thank you, Anne. That's a confirmation. And, and we just had Joan share that. It was like perfect timing, you know? So thank you, Joan. All right, everybody. Let's unmute everyone. I love you. Yeah, let's do, okay. Thank lead you. us, Joan. Thank you. It was amazing. Yes. Oh, yeah. Thank you. You're so awesome. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. In a few Bye. minutes, Sammy. Thank you. Have a Friday. Bye. 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 Well, Ferris, love you. Love you. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye, Johnny. Bye, Ferris.